I'm Bob Fioretti of the Disparity Law Group, and we are here today in the matter of former Flossmoor Police Chief Jarrell Jones. This morning, we filed a civil rights lawsuit in federal court against the village of Flossmoor and the Br village manager, Bridget Wachtel, on behalf of Chief Jones. The suit highlights a pattern of racially discriminatory pa behaviors by the village manager that created an environment in which no one could succeed. Last year, on March 27th, 2023, the village of Flossmoor, a community of roughly 60% African Americans, swore in their first black police chief, Jarrell Jones. During his tenure of less than a, uh, one year, Chief Jones built meaningful relationships within members of the community, with the police force, and surrounding communities. Last week, in a community meeting about Chief Jones, more than 100 people came together in support. This group included residents, community leaders, and countless sworn police officers and leadership from the Southland. In less than one year, Chief Jones gained the respect of so many. He worked hard to institute new policies and incorporated new technology into the office. And yet, at every point, at every turn, he was met with resistance and discrimination by the village manager and other key members of the government. This kind of discrimination and racism is not welcome in Flossmoor, in our communities, and especially in and by government. So this morning, we filed a federal lawsuit against the village and the village manager. At this time, I would like to introduce Cass Casper, also of the Disparity Law Group, and he will walk you through the federal lawsuit that we filed today. Cass. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, members of the media, thank you for being here today. Uh, my name is Cass, first name C-A-S-S, -S, last name Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R. I'm one of the attorneys with the Sparty Law Group who is helping Chief Jones rectify this situation. As Mr. Fioretti just stated, this morning we filed a federal civil rights anti-discrimination lawsuit here in the federal court in Chicago against the village of Flossmoor and the village manager, Bridget Wachtel. We are currently waiting on a judge assignment. Uh, as soon as we have that, we'll keep you updated. We're waiting on the assignment of a first court date. As soon as we have that, we'll keep you updated. Our complaint includes four counts. We're citing a violation of the 14th Amendment of the Equal Protection Clause of the, clause of the Constitution based on race discrimination that the village and village manager walked will engage in in their campaign of discrimination and, and race-based termination of Chief Jones. Let me take you through a few highlights in the complaint. On or about October 5th of 2023, Chief Jones complained about disparate treatment that he was undergoing by the village manager, Wachtel, to the village mayor, Michelle Nelson. He raised a concern that there was a second set of performance standards being imposed on him as a black department head in the village that was not being imposed on any of the other department heads in the village. He raised concerns that as a, a, a black chief, he's been being held to a higher standard than the other department heads, an unreasonable set of standards that in fact set him up to fail and that no person could meet. The mayor assured him she would look into the matter, but she did not. Instead, what, what followed in the remaining weeks of October and into November, the village manager Wachtel issued a series of performance memoranda to Chief Jones, criticizing him for every facet, not just of his employment, but down to his personality, down to the way that he talks, down to the manner of his speech. I highlight some of the excerpts from these memos in the complaint. And let me quote to you uh, what the village manager, Bridget Wachtel, says about Chief Jones at one of her performance memos. She says, quote, you do not speak plainly or answer questions directly. You talk around questions or offer a piece of information that you want to share, information that is often not relevant to the discussion. 
The full excerpt is at paragraph 47 of the complaint. Folks, this is a white administration complaining about how the black Chief Jones talks. There's no bona fide criticism that he said anything inappropriate here. This entire criticism from village manager Wachtel is about the manner in which the chief talks. Folks, this is race-based animus through and through. This is the, a, a, a black department head not meeting up to the expectation of a white administration because he's black. These are not legitimate performance concerns. They're race-based ones. In one of the other excerpts from the performance memo in the complaint, um, a village manager walks so criticizes Chief Jones because he talked too much. He spoke for 53 minutes at a community relations meeting about the doings and the achievements and the objectives of the Flossmoor Police Department. Bridget Wachtel criticizes him for talking for 53 minutes in one of these performance memos. She said he was told to keep it brief. Folks, what's wrong with Chief Jones talking for 53 minutes about the doings and objectives and achievements of the Flossmoor Police Department at a community relations meeting? Chief Jones was actually lauded lauded by others at the meeting, including other, other administrators in the village for his comments there. Yet Bridget Wachtel, not only does she criticize how he talks, his speech patterns, she criticizes how long he talks. He talks too much. We go on from there. In one of the other criticisms from Bridget Wachtel's performance memo, memorandum, she criticizes Chief Jones and Deputy Chief Jones, Keith, Keith Taylor, who's also black, because on one occasion they were walking around the village pointing out other places that Flossmoor should install surveillance cameras. She criticized him for that. What's wrong with that? Well, we submit because it's Black Chief Jones's ideas and not what the white administration thinks should be done. And that's why it makes it in a performance memo. She also criticizes Chief Jones because he took the initiative on his own to reach out to the, the, the local school superintendent to see if the police department could get access to school district camera footage. What's wrong with that, folks? The police department wants access to the school district camera footage to ensure the safety of our children in an age of school shootings? Village manager Wachtel criticizes Chief Jones for doing that, literally, for reaching out to the superintendent and asking for that camera access. And you know what else she says? She says, we were concerned about this matter being handled delicately. The assistant village manager, who's a white man, wanted, wanted you to take his lead on this, and you did not. You reached out on your own. So once again, we have a white hierarchy, and Chief Jones is expected to fit in precisely with what the white hierarchy expects. And whenever he doesn't, whenever he talks out of too much, whenever he doesn't talk how the white hierarchy wants him to talk, whenever he takes initiative on his own, as police chief, which is his job, it winds up in a performance memo. There's other excerpts that are outlined in the complaint from these performance memos. You can read them for yourselves. They range from, well, he was using his cell phone during the Flossmore Fest to communicate with other leadership rather than the radio. This is standard police practice in modern times, folks, for police ranking police officers to use their cell phones to communicate. It's not a basis for criticism. Yet, all these things wind up in the performance memoranda. Fundamentally, this complaint states that he was subjected to one set of performance standards because he's a black man. Not because he's police chief, but because he's a black man. And when he doesn't meet the white administration's expectations exactly to a T, they fire him. That's what the lawsuit is about. That's the, what we're hoping to rectify in this lawsuit going forward. And with that, I'll turn it over to Chief Jones if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Cass. Good morning. My name is Jarrell Jones, J-E-R-E-L Jones. J-O-N-E-S. This has been a very traumatic time for me, so I'm just going to share a few words before I turn the mic back over to Cass. In March of 2023, I was sworn in as the first black chief of the village of Flossmoor. I left the city of Macomb where I studied and got my first jobs in law enforcement to include serving as 
the first African American chief of police for the Macomb Police Department. When the opportunity came up to return to an area close to where I grew up to become a new police chief in Flossmoor, I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled. For a year, I worked hard to build relationships with members of the community, local businesses, and the law enforcement community in both Flossmoor and the Southland. I worked tirelessly to, check, to create a safer environment for our community amidst some difficult times. I advocated for new policies and technologies that would transform the Flossmoor Police Department into one of the greatest agencies in the state of Illinois. Some of the tenets of the Flossmoor Police Department are fair and equal treatment, promote unity, and encourage respect. These are all principles that I've strived to lead by every day, but unfortunately didn't seem to experience these as a member of the village leadership team. At this time, I am humbled to have the support of the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, Noble. And I would like to invite our representative from Noble to say a few words. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mitchell Davis, M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-D-A-V-I-S. I am the police chief in the village of Hazelcrest, but I'm here today in the capacity of a representative for the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, Noble. Uh, we just returned from a, a brief conference in the city of Atlanta, and our national president uh, generated a press release that he wanted me to read at this particular event. The National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, Noble, expressed his concern over the recent termination of Chief Jarrell Jones of Flossmoor, Illinois. Noble joins a Chicago Metropolitan chapter as we collectively lend our support to Chief Jarrell Jones. In reviewing the totality of the publicly available information, it is very alarming that in a matter of months, the administration determined that Chief Jarrell Jones made, quote, serious lapses in performance that rose to the level of severing his relationship with the community. It appears to us that the members of the Flossmoor community also share these concerns. Noble stands in support of Chief Jarrell Jones to ensure that his character and his professional integrity are not the casualty of allegations and decisions made by Flossmoor's administration. Again, Noble stands firmly in support of Chief Jones as we witness the unwavering backing of the community and his professional peers. Chief Jones has demonstrated ex exceptional leadership, integrity, and dedication in his role as a law enforcement professional. His commitment to serving and protecting the community while also advocating uh, for positive change in the department have earned him the respect and the admiration of his and services of those he serves and those he works alongside. As an organization dedicated to promoting justice and equality within law enforcement, Noble is proud to stand alongside Chief Jones and support his continued efforts to uphold the highest standards of professionalism and accountability in policing. This is the statement being released by our national president, Chief Rodney Bryant. Any questions? Well, uh, through the course of discovery, we expect more to come out on uh, what the mayor's role has been. This is really a, a strong village manager form of government and the, uh, a weak mayor. Chief Jones, was there ever any uh, accusation that you did not perform your law enforcement duties uh, to the highest level, or is this strictly about meeting performance goals set on Um, I'm going to speak as Chief Jones's attorney on behalf of him with respect to that. Uh, we have invited the village to release the full performance memos to the public in the complaint. We cannot release them ourselves because we're concerned that the village will claim we released safety sensitive information about policing if we were to do that. But we invite them to do it. And I submit to you, a full reading of those memos doesn't show one iota of a failing in law enforcement duties. Rather, it shows the kinds of race-based, hypercritical, micromanagerial criticisms I outlined before. So the answer to that question is no. Chief Jones has, uh, has upheld a high standard of law enforcement in the village, and he intends to continue to do so if he's allowed to stay there. 
Chief, um, what kind of contract did you set, sign, and what were the parameters of the contract that you signed? I mean, how many years, how many? Do you want to address that? Yeah. I'm going to turn that over to yeah. Chief Jones to address that. Thank you for your question. Uh, I was told um, at the time of, of hire that the village does not do contracts for department directors. Um, I had a conditional offer that had certain um, things that we negotiated between myself and my family and, and the village administration, um, which had been outlined in that document. So they could terminate them in time? To confirm, I am a mayoral appointment. Okay. Chief, what do you want to say to the people of Wasmore? You know, so you come into office, have high expectations, and then see this. Sure. First and foremost, I am thankful for the residents of Flossmore. The men, women, the children, our school districts, they're very supportive. And myself, my administrative team, we have worked tirelessly to build robust relationships with the residents and our school district partners, our business owners, and our stakeholders. And that will never change. That has always been a priority of mine since I've been sworn in as their police chief. And my heart is with the Flossmore community. And I thank you for your confidence in me as your police chief. Would you go back if they took you back? I'm going to so, address that. Yeah. This is what we're seeking. The village of Flossmore has the opportunity to avert this lawsuit, to invert this litigation, to rectify this wrong, and to, to, to fix the situation with the chief that the public demands. We're offering this, a full public apology from the mayor to Chief Jones. Bring him back as police chief. Remove him from the campaign of hypercritical race-based criticism that he endured, and give him a fair chance to be police chief free from that double standard. And if the village were to take that offer, it would avert this lawsuit. Chief, how long are you um, the police chief in the Cobb and the Cobb? Um, I know. was a police chief in Macomb for two years. Okay. And then were you chief prior to that or just part of the police force? Or how long have you been in law? What's your background? Yes, I'm a 17-year law enforcement veteran. I have experience in university policing, county policing, and also municipal policing. I was a lieutenant in charge of operations and investigations prior to being sworn in as the chief of police for the city of Macomb. And were there any, ever any problems there, any type of similar accusations there? The... Ma'am, I had the absolute and full support of the men and women of the Macomb Police Department the mayor, the city administrator, the community was an absolute support system for me and my leadership and my family. I lived in Macomb for 20 years. I received education there, a bachelor's and a master's from Western Illinois University. I served as an adjunct professor in addition to being a law enforcement executive. Macomb made it very clear that they wanted me to stay and that they did not want me to leave. And there were a lot of questions as to why I was leaving I left to come to Flossmoor for a better opportunity to be closer to home and to continue to serve in a profession, a noble profession, to which I dearly love. All right, any other questions? So, oh, one last one. Go ahead. Flossmoor uh, indicated or implied in a statement that you helped engineer an outpouring of public support at the board meeting on March 4th. I was wondering if you could walk yeah. us through how that um, turnout came about? Uh, people had heard about it. Uh, no, he did not. He was as far away as possible from that. People heard about it. They showed up, um, including, as some people have heard from, uh, the current state's attorney was interviewed regarding this. She showed up at the meeting. Uh, so the people came from all across, all walks of life, to support him. And they will continue to support him. I think. Uh In addition to um, people showing up last Monday, from a law enforcement standpoint, our Chicago Metropolitan Noble chapter came out in support. What happens quite often that most people will never know is that there are communities all around the country that have crises where they bring in chiefs of color 
to try to get things straight, to try to move things forward. But what happens so often is when they bring in these chiefs of color, for some reason, because they don't operate by the standards that existed, which is why they were in the situations they were in anyway, they seem to systemically get rid of them. This is not uncommon. And because it's not in common, we as an organization, we have to stand up for one another. If we don't stand up for one another, who's going to stand up for us? I personally, after their, their officer-involved shooting, the mayor and the manager contacted me. And I came, and I brought noble members, and we did a town hall in Flossmoor to try to help them heal. Because we care about I'm not from Flossmoor, but they're a surrounding community, and we did that to help the community. And when this situation presented itself, our members of our chapter decided that just like we were there when he got sworn in in full force, that when he's being faced with these challenges that so many of us are faced with, that we would show up and support him as well. All right. Thank you, everybody.